Okay, everybody, uh, let's go ahead and start talking about text um, and how to create it and use it in uh, Photoshop. It's fairly easy. Um, as you can see, what I've created is a simple uh, canvas, 8.5 by 11, uh, with a white background, so we have something to work with. I'm going to go ahead and lock the white background so I don't move it around. I simply click the white background and hit the lock button. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new background, a new layer, just so um, I've got something uh, else kind of up here. And then I'm going to go over to my toolbar. Now, when we're working with type, we've got a variety of type uh, options, and they're all nested right here under the type tool. Horizontal, vertical, and various masking options. I'm going to primarily use the horizontal type tool, horizontal type. Now, a couple of things I want to draw your attention to before we get started. First off, you'll notice how I've got options up here at the top for the font, the font style, uh, so italic, bold, so forth and so on, the font size, uh, and then some other options up at the top. Those are all fine, but I want to uh, show you guys where to go to actually get a full list of options to work with for type. That's this option right here. That's the uh, character and paragraph panel. When I click this, I get this option, character and paragraph panel. Okay, I'm going to move this out so it's perhaps a little bit easier to see. So we have character, we have paragraph. Now, we're going to use both of these a little bit today, um, and I'm going to just play around with this so that you guys can see some of the options uh, that you have here. But this panel gives you full control over your type, and you need to think about this as more than just trying to put words on the page. You're actually trying to design using your type. Now, uh, I've got basically everything uh, looks like reset um, for automatic, so let's go ahead and move into our page, and I'm going to go ahead and create some type. Now, the biggest thing that I want to try and urge you guys to do as we go into this is actually create a, a very specific space for your type. Now, instead of simply clicking and just type, 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 which you'll see it just goes off into infinity to the right, um, I'm going to hit Command, uh, well, I'm going to lock this in and then hit Command-Z to make it go away. Instead of, um, Command-Z, by the way, is undo, as you guys will recall. Uh, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is create a text box. It's fairly easy. What I'm going to do is just click, hold, and drag to create a box for my text. Now, you should be able to see that I, my cursor is flashing here on the left. And I'm just going to type in... The Explorer. This semester, that's the name of the magazine that we're going to be working on, The Explorer. Easy enough. So, as long as my, my cursor is flashing, what I can do is actually resize this text box any way I want to. The big plus of uh, having a text box is this creates a discrete space for our text. Now, as I move, uh, let me reset something real quick. There we go. As I move my text box in, again, as long as the, the cursor is flashing, you'll see that the text will wrap. So as long as the space is lar large enough for the uh, text to go uh, horizontally, it will stay horizontal. It will stay on one line. But if I shrink the box down, it will go down to two lines, or it will start going off the screen. Now. If I were to move to the Explorer, Backspace, and then hit Return to put it on a different line, uh, I can shrink the box any way I want to to be as tight as I want to. But if I shrink it past the size of the text, so shrink it to uh, the bottom up, 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 and uh oh, it's not large enough for the text, you'll notice that the Explorer goes away. I can simply click and drag it down. Uh, until the box is large enough to allow for my text. This is a problem that some students uh, have when they first start working with it. They'll start typing or maybe resizing the text and then they'll say, oh, where did my words go? I'm missing something. And they'll say, I just don't know how to bring it back. Now, if I clicked off of the box and you'll notice that I no longer can see my cursor, what I can do to bring up the cursor anytime I want to, if I want to go back and edit the text, anytime I want to, I simply just go into the layer, 
double click the T, and now I'm back in text editing mode. Easy enough. I can resize the box to allow for my text. So that's easy enough um, to work with. So again, creating a text box allows us to have a discrete um, and very specific area for our text to be in. All right, let's talk about some of the options we have as long as our cursor is flashing in the box and we can play around with it, okay? So first off, if we highlight our text and move into our character uh, panel, what we'll see is our actual font. Now our font is a very specific type of um, text we're using. So as I scroll through, you can see the different types of font we're dealing with. I was using Georgia, Agent Red, some are larger, some are smaller, and you're almost always going to need to resize uh, as we go through. So I'm just going to pick, for the sake of this, Arial. Yeah, let's go with Arial. Very simple. Okay? So that's the font. <clears throat> the style allows you to choose things like italic, bold, bold italic. Now, some fonts have a variety of styles that go beyond just these simple ones. Um, but these are the ones that are that are uh, that are part of almost every one that has one of these arrows next to it. These are the most common styles that you see. As we move down, you'll notice this is the size. These are most com or very common um, points. These are different sizes of font. But I also can uh, freely transform it by simply moving my mouse over the two T's, and you'll notice how the mouse turns to a uh, finger with two arrows. And then I can click, hold, and drag to the left or the right to resize as I see fit. Okay, So I'll click and hold when I see this finger on any one of these uh, to simply drag to the left and right and resize as I see fit. The next options are leading, um, kerning, and tracking. Now, we'll go through these fairly quickly. I gave a handout in class, uh, but we will talk about these specifically. Leading is the space, as it shows right here, between lines. Nope. <laughs> Wait for this text message to go away. Uh, so, that, there it goes. Leading is the space between lines. Um, I'm going to bring up my text again. There we go. Come on. Uh, so, it is the space between lines of text. So, for example, uh, in any kind of design, we want to try and control space. We want to use space to the best of our ability. Right now, we've got this large amount of empty space between the word the and uh oh, go away. <laughs> the and Explorer. Um, so, what we want to do is actually adjust the leading to actually shrink that space. Now, essentially, the program tries to create space uh, for one reason and one reason alone, and that is just to keep the letters off of each other, to keep. Um, keep the text from basically covering one another. But as a designer, again, we want to create a design that looks good and conserves space uh, so that we can get the most out of our design. As we go over into uh, the leading area, click and drag, what you can see is that we're creating or uh, reducing or extending the amount of space between these two lines. So if I wanted to conserve this space, boom, there we go. All right, so I've tightened up the space, made it look a little bit nicer. Now I could actually have more room for design if I wanted to. I could also extend or, uh, sorry, shrink uh, the box itself to kind of bracket the, the, um, the title, the Explorer. If I go down, uh, and I'm just going to highlight the Explorer, for example. If I go directly underneath the leading, again, leading, there it is, 
go directly underneath this as we'll see tracking. Tracking is the space between letters. Now tracking is a space between all the letters in a given word or line. Okay, So if I wanted to tighten all the letters on a particular word or line, I could adjust the tracking. Now again, uh, essentially, the tracking is set for a given font to just keep the, word, uh, the letters off of one another. But as a designer, you may want this to be different. You may want to conserve space or create a very specific look. Uh, maybe a tighter, more elegant look for uh, your design. So you may want to reduce, uh, uh, reduce the tracking. You may want it to be spaced out um, to create a more um, esoteric... Uh, maybe wandering look, um, but that's really your choice. Now, if I do have something, for example, uh, that uh, if I wanted to create space between two very specific letters or reduce it, for example, if I wanted to connect uh, the X and the P, that's where I would go into kerning, and then I could actually adjust the space between these two letters. For example, if I wanted to connect the X and the P right here, simply click between these two and adjust the space between those two letters. Okay. Now, uh, in some cases, this might be a matter of uh, two letters just simply being too close to one another. In other situations, it may be a situation, or it may be a case of, let's say, aw, for example. In this case, it may be a situation where I wanted to create a nicer line between this A and the W. So, if I shrink that, I could get closer, 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 and create a tighter line between those two. Uh, maybe I wanted to connect the E to the W, and create that tight line between the A and the W. Mm, don't know. I may want to choose a different font. But essentially, kerning can give you the ability to play around uh, with the individual space between two letters. Um, if you say, uh, you know, I need more space here or less space, that's what kerning does. So that's what these three um, controls do. If there's a particular letter, for example, this R, that I would like to extend, stretch out, I've got scaling options. Scale it vertically. Scale it horizontally. And then I have some others like, say, superscripting. So if I wanted the O to be raised, I could do that as well. Okay. I also have the ability to change color from this. So for example, if I wanted to change the to a particular color, obviously I could change it right here. Hope I had a, the wrong one selected. So I had EXP instead of THE selected. Um, so select the right part choose the color you want, and you can change the colors right here as well. All of these are other options, bold, italics, uh, all caps, small caps. The rest of these you can play with as well. Okay, so moving on from this. <clears throat> if I wanted to create blocks of text, and I'm going to scale this down a bit, I want to talk about a final thing before I wrap up here. Uh, if I wanted to create a block of text and see what it looked like before maybe uh, copying and pasting a block of text from a Word document in, there's a tool we have called uh, Lorem Ipsum. I just created a block, uh, text block down here, and then I can go under Type and Paste Lorem Ipsum. Now, you've probably seen this before. This looks like Latin or something, but it's all just gibberish, essentially. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, back to auto and zero, um, make it tight, and uh, yeah, we'll leave it here just so that it's easy to see. Okay, 
Now, essentially, uh, the 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 uh, design concept I want to talk about is called framing. The idea of framing is that we always want to build from the outside in to conserve as much space as possible. Now, as we build from the outside of a page in, what we've got is essentially alignment uh, on the outside and then openness on the right. Now, we will generally put something on the right that will balance this out, so maybe a picture of some kind over here on the right. So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to go ahead and put just a rectangle right here. Uh, okay, got some crazy stuff going on here. Delete that extra rectangle. And we're going to make it... There we go. Okay, so I've got, uh, let's just say, a picture of some kind over here. And we've got text on that side. So essentially, what we've got is a tight uh, area on the left. This is considered left aligned. Um, or in the design uh, community, we may call this ragged right. If you can see how it's raggedy down the right side. Left aligned is ragged right. This tells us that we're using the maximum amount of space on the left side of the screen while we're not necessarily using the maximum amount of space on the right side. But that's okay because we have something else that balances it out. In this case, some sort of picture, image, graphic uh, on the right side. That's okay. But if we move these things around and maybe swap these positions, so we have an image on the left and text that would then appear on the right, now we have a different problem. So we've got an image on the left and text on the right, so our alignment is not working anymore. We've got a maximum amount of space used on the inside of the page, which is right here in the middle, but we're not using the maximum amount of space on the outside of the page. This is a problem from a design perspective because we aren't using our page wisely. What we would want to do is go to the paragraph tab and switch the alignment. Now by switching the alignment what we do is use the maximum amount of space on the right. Maybe we don't want to push the words all the way to the edge, but we want to keep it kind of close. Now we uh, would create right align, ragged left to use the maximum amount on the right and then we would have this ragged area on the left. This is uh, still considered framing. We use the maximum amount of space on the outside of the page possible. Now our image is using the maximum amount of space on the left. Our text is using the maximum amount of space on the right. And that gives us basically um, some empty space, some white space, sort of in the middle that we can work with. This is actually a pretty decent way of uh, creating framing. Now, if we had an image in the middle, what we would do is perhaps build our text around it. So we would have right aligned text down the right side of the page, left aligned text down the left side of the page, and then an image that would go down the middle uh, that would be framed on both sides by text. <coughs> <coughs> You would see this in a lot of magazine covers. In fact, you can look at almost any magazine cover and see this exact same uh, design dynam dynamic because this is a pretty rudimentary um, form of design theory. Um, if we really wanted to use uh, the majority of our space, what we would do is actually go into what's called justification. So instead of aligning, what we might do is justify. Those are these three options. Now justification would actually do the same thing, but it would try and use the maximum amount of space on the left and the right of our text box while creating some kind of odd spacing in between. Um, it's okay, but uh, you are going to get some odd spacing. For the most part, uh, on a design like this, using uh, left align or right align is usually pretty okay as long as you're framing something on the inside of your page. So I want you guys to keep that in mind as you're uh, designing, <clears throat> as you're designing your own uh, projects. 
Now, when we move forward into things like um, InDesign, where we're creating entire pages of text, justification is going to become even more important, and we'll talk about how to use it more appropriately with large, large text blocks. Uh, but for now, I think that's going to put a cherry on the top of our discussion of text. If you have any other questions or comments, please let me know. Otherwise, I will talk to you later.